Okay, so this is the last um, <clears throat> our last session for today. It's got a bit of a uh, bias towards student uh, caving, which is great. It's our future. And Tom's going to come up and talk about a organization that's got together. It's all the students have got together and formed a, the Council of Higher Education for Caving Clubs. So, uh, Tom, I'll hand over to you. Hi, I'm Tom Stans. I was until uh, last weekend the chairman for three years of the Council of Higher Education Caving Clubs. Um, the Council of Higher Education Caving Clubs is an organisation that was set up about 20 years ago to encourage, facilitate and support um, particularly university student caving uh, in the UK. So what is CHEC? It's a national organisation, as I say, set up to support and encourage uh, caving amongst uh, university students. And it prim primarily does this by um, networking students um, so that they can help each other out, essentially, um, particularly with things like safety and training, um, safety priority number one, um, as we've just heard from um, about cave rescue. Um, in fact, there's, there's very little cave rescue um, of students, relatively, contrary to popular belief. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, I can actually supply you some figures that illustrate this. Czech helps to facilitate training. Um, so every year we have an annual forum um, that's attended by most of the university caving clubs in the UK. And we run, on, run lots and lots of training activities um, to get everybody up to speed in um, in things like uh, rope um, access, uh, so cave surveying, um, and ecology and cave science and things like this. And I'll mention a little bit more about that. And finally, I mean, we're here talking about 50 years of um, British cave exploration. And, you know, university students have paid, played a huge role in exploration, both in the UK and globally. Um, many, many university students... Um, including the British Caving Association chairman was a university a student one day, um, some moons ago, I'm not sure how many, um, and it, he's gone on to lead some of the biggest cave exploration um, in the world. So Czech facilitates expeditions. Um, this is just a kind of a map and a list of all of the sort of member clubs, so all of the university caving clubs in the UK, um, some clubs used, used to exist and now no longer exist, but some more clubs are coming along. Um, and so we've got about 20 clubs at the moment, um, and we're also facilitating the re-establishment of some old clubs which um, have previously folded, as I say, such as um, Lancaster University, for example. And so this is just a, a kind of distribution of those clubs around the UK. Um, if you go on the Czech website, it's czech.org. Um, I'll put up a link on the finishing slide. You can go and have a look at this uh, map, and you can click on any of the club names and go through to their websites and see what they're all up to. Um, I just started having a go, really, um, before coming here at assimilating some of the kind of highlights of um, expeditions run by or heavily involving university caving clubs. Um, this is by no means comprehensive at this stage, but um, I think something we'll look to do is actually get a, a page on the Czech website set up um, that kind of assimilates all of the university-led and um, heavily university-involved uh, explorations. And a lot, of, a lot of these can be found on the Garparau Foundation website, from which um, many caving expeditions, including a lot of the university expeditions, are funded partially. We heard um, yesterday that was news to me um, about uh, John Gunn, the chair of the British Cave Research Association, um, was part of Huddersfield University Caving Club, which no longer exists, sadly, and they led uh, an expedition to Ethiopia. Um, and that's something that I wasn't aware of. And who knows, we might look into re-establishing a Huddersfield uh, University Caving Club um, in the near future. Um, so I'll just run through a few... Um, Highlights a few examples. 
by no means a comprehensive list of University Cave and Club expeditions in the time I've got, um, but just to touch on some of the most recent uh, expeditions that university clubs have run and been involved in. So this is SUS, Sheffield University Speleological Society. Um, their most recent expedition this year was to Serbia. Um, unfortunately, they didn't find too many caves this year, um, although I'm informed they nearly got struck by lightning. That's all they had to say for themselves. I'm sure it wasn't that bad, really. Um, SUS actually have been involved in many, many expeditions for years and years and years. They're quite a, quite a historic club, um, and they've been all over the place, kind of um, Greece, Serbia this year, um, Romania... Imperial College Caving Club, um, just round the corner. And at this point, I should also uh, just thank Imperial for uh, sorting us out at the Imperial um, Union Bar last night. And um, they were able to f facilitate that for all of us to go round there. So that was very much appreciated. It's worth knowing people in university caving clubs. They can get a lot of things done. Um, you know. We're going to hear from Imperial and about their expedition to Slovenia later on in this session, um, so do stick around for that. They've been um, exploring in the region for 23 years. Um, they've been gener generously supported by UK Caving, um, who are very supportive of university caving, um, with donations of hundreds of metres of rope to facilitate them to go and plumb the depths and explore um, new caves. So do stay around for that. Um, Musk, Manchester University Speleological Society, um, have been um, quite uh, involved for a number of years in caving in Matienzo in northern Spain. And uh, next up, we'll hear from Juan about the Matienzo caving um, project, um, opening up, you know, big, big project in northern Spain. And it's not just Manchester, but several university clubs have been involved in exploration in this area. Um, very uh, active area for cave exploration currently um, is uh, in Austria. This is um, not too far from Salzburg. We have, um, if I can just find the pointer, we can see we've got the Totzgebirge uh, Plateau. Um, that's the, the dead mountains. Well, you can see that up there in the north. Um, and that's where Cambridge University Cave and Club have been going for over 40 years now. Um, and then in the Dachstein um, in, the, in the south here, um, there's, again, been um, a lot of activity from various university clubs um, kind of facilitated by jo Joel Corrigan um, in recent years. And I'll talk a little bit more about these expeditions. Cambridge University Cave and Club, again, we're going to hear from them during this session about their 40 years of cave exploration, 41 years of cave exploration um, on the Totzgebirge uh, plateau there. Um, as a, not a student anymore, Frank Tully walking across the plateau. Um, you know, this, this expedition has been going for over 40 years. It's discovered uh, some of the largest caves in Austria. It's very well supported by the Austrian National Park Service, who are very keen um, on Cambridge continuing to find some of the biggest caves in the country in this region. Just this year, um, we were kind of going back to some previous uh, some previously explored areas. So University of Leeds, University of Bristol have also been exploring on the plateau around this area. And this year we went and um, found a snow plug that was kind of partially melted and found this packet of big deep peanuts that was left by a previous University of Bristol um, caving expedition 20 years previously. And so we were able to tweet them and kind of say, hey, we're just doing some litter picking for you here. And there's an interesting debate on this thread, actually, about at which point litter becomes uh, an archaeological artefact. <laughs> um, so then I also mentioned um, the expeditions put together by Joel Corrigan. Uh, this was a training event a couple of years ago in South Wales. Um, really, really successful. Um, and in no way does Czech claim credit for it, but I'm just putting it here to, to kind of highlight um, what happens when you can facilitate networking, collaboration between university caving clubs. 
sort of intrinsically, university caving clubs are very ephemeral. Students come and go, experience builds up, and then it's lo lost as alumni leave sometimes. Um, some alumni stay on and pass on knowledge and continue to lead ex uh, trips and expeditions, and that's invaluable, really, to the, the health of student caving. Uh, during this particular training event, it was just a, a weekend that was put on, and members from about five different university caving clubs all attended um, and were essentially given um, advanced courses in single rope technique, which is the rope techniques that most of us uh, are familiar with that we use to, to access caves. There's just some more pictures from that training event there. And this was sort of in preparation for the Datstein expedition in Austria, but other students were invited to come along and participate in this training, regardless of whether they were going on that particular expedition. Um, one university student who did go on that expedition last year, and this is a photo of Alex Newt from Plymouth University Adventure and Expo Society. Um, and the photo was actually taken um, by Ari Cooper Davis from uh, Exeter University Speleological Society. And Ari said about this um, particular expedition that it kind of it opened his mind to um, and completely was a life-changing experience. He plumbed depths deeper than he ever imagined. He discovered 100 meters of new cave, and 100 meters might not sound a, like a lot to, to some of the more seasoned uh, cave explorers in this room. Um, but in fact, just think about that. 100 meters, who can say other than a caver or an astronaut or a deep sea diver, that they've discovered 100 meters of new area that nobody has ever seen before. It's incredible. And every year students are, are getting this incredible experience of being able to do these things. And here I just um, have a couple of examples uh, of Freshers' Fair this year. So Freshers' Fair, every year, you have societies and clubs all competing for the interest of the, the new cohort of, of, of freshmen students coming into university. And this is really the hook. And this is where I suspect a lot of people in this room started caving. It all started with this moment at a university freshers' fair um, where somebody had some photographs or some equipment um, or some cave surveys and you took an interest and this is where it started, and now, years later, you've kind of um, come along and you've caved all over the UK, all over the world. You've taken part in exploratory caving. I've mentioned already um, John Gunn, chair of the British Cave Research Association. He was um, at Huddersfield University. The British Caving Association chairman, Andy Evis, he was at Leicester University originally um, and went on expedition with them to Norway. Um, and then he went on to join what was possibly the best caving club in the world at that time, was Leeds University. And so this is where it all starts. And so this is what Czech is particularly interested in supporting and encouraging, is getting the hook, getting people interested and then making sure they have a really positive experience, get them trained up and allow them to go on these expeditions and explore new cave around the world. I've just put these up, uh, guys up as an example. Um, University of Leeds Speleological Association. As I mentioned, university caving clubs are ephemeral. People come and go. Sometimes there's a lot of experience within the club and a couple of years later, the club may be running on a shoestring with very few members or very little experience intrinsic within that club. And this is where clubs can really come together and support each other. University of Leeds, they've, had, they've been around for a long, long time. Um, as many university clubs have been established in the 60s and they've been around for a long, long time. So they've had their ups and downs. Um, Leeds is on and up again at the moment. Um, they've had kind of an excess of kit. Um, they had a generous kit donation, um, again, from UK Caving, who have been very supportive. Um, and so this year, they've been loaning kit to 
new university clubs or clubs with universities which are trying to establish caving clubs at their universities. So this year we've had Harper Adams University, which I believe has never had a caving club before. They're potentially starting up a caving club. Um, and we've had Lancaster, which is in a prime caving region in the UK, in the Yorkshire Dales. And they haven't had a caving club for many years, which is sad because we want to facilitate people to be able to get into caving and go caving if, they, if that's the kind of thing that they're into, these Marmite people. And so Ulster have generously kind of lent kit to these, um, to these clubs to help them start up new caving clubs again. Um, recently, with our small financial reserves that we have in check, um, we were able to bulk purchase a big job lot of brand new caving gear um, cheaply, and we're now able to sell that on to a couple of clubs to help them get going. We've got two events coming up. Um, as I mentioned last weekend, um, we had our annual forum um, in the Yorkshire Dales, and that attracted around about 300 university students so it's a very strong, it's a big event. Uh, lots of networking, lots of training goes on. The next events, Southern Czech and Northern Czech, um, each attract about 150 students. And the training on offer gets more and more every year. There's rope training, survey training, ecology training, kit inspections, cave rescue training. So, you know, this is very, very worthwhile um, event that's really, really doing a lot of good for student caving. And I will just finish by um, leaving you with this slide, and there's the website for Czech. Um, the most useful thing on that website is just that list of university caving clubs. You can go on there and go and have a look at their websites. And also, I really, really, really would encourage all of you to go on the UK caving website, and you go to Forum, Organisations, Czech, Every year, the UK Caving uh, website runs a, a big grand prize um, where they give out a lot of caving gear to clubs. Um, and, and in order to win, the clubs have to put up trip reports, uh, summaries about their club and what it's about. And so just recently, uh, so last week, we've had a whole f new flood of posts on this forum all from all of the different university caving clubs telling us about what they're up to, um, what they've been doing, how many members they've got, the history of the club, um, and photographs and videos that they've created and so on. And so I really would encourage you to go on, have a look, and see what um, student caving is all about. And now I'll hand you back to Phil, um, who's just going to say a couple of words also about student caving, I think. Thank you, Phil. Thanks. So um, what I'd really like to say is I actually turned up to Czech this year. Um, I've been to several Czechs. Uh, it has to be said, uh, when they first started, it was quite a good uh, drunken affair like Hidden Earth. And I was quite surprised how Czech has changed. They are very organized. They have a committee. They are dedicated for training. And they are solving problems within the student community. So that if one of the... If one of the um, clubs do lose all their members, one of the other clubs will come out and help them. Now, I was really surprised by this, and I've, I'm, I'm glad this has been recorded, because I'm a bit sad that Bill has just talked about Cave Rescue and how they're all getting past sell-by dates, and they need some new people, and he's left the auditorium. We need to support these guys, because they're our future. They are out there doing some good stuff. They've got expeditions, but the wider community do need to help them, take them seriously. And with the Czech committee, they've got, a, they've got a post now on the BCA. When they need help, we need to go and help them because if we don't, there's going to be even more sell-by dates and our, our sport's going to die. 